concert, the uh, album was heavily inspired by a photographer by the name of Vivian Meh and she was a nanny in New York and had this little camera that she'd take everywhere with her and everywhere she'd go she'd take pictures of anything, people in the street, um, anything she saw she'd take a picture of. Um, but she, I don't know, she was like quite elusive and I don't know the reasons for that, maybe she was a tad insecure, didn't think she was good enough or maybe like the reality of life and all the responsibilities kind of took over but she never really put her, her photos out there. She passed away in 2009 and the person that took over her studio found loads of these old kind of prints and he thought, ah, oh, this is a bit strange. I'll get them developed and see what they're saying. And he got them developed and they were the most incredible pictures ever, just like the most amazing street photography. Sent them to a few galleries saying, oh, like, I've just come across these, what do you think? And they thought the same. And lo and behold, Vivian Mayer became one of the most famous photographers of recent times. And I got to thinking that it's crazy how she didn't get to see herself reach her full potential. And she was everywhere. She was taking pictures of everything and, and anything, but no one knew who she was. That like no one saw these pictures when she was alive. Um, and that's what I kind of, kind of thought of the term everywhere and nowhere because it's funny how many people can relate to that. Like, you know you've got talent, you know you've got potential, but due to one barrier or another, it just never ever gets fulfilled and the world can perceive that as oh they just weren't good enough or maybe they just didn't have anything to offer but she's passed away and she's become super famous her photography has become super famous so she had that talent and that gift in all along but wasn't able to to live it out and i thought that do you know what that's the story of so many people people that come from a background similar to mine where you grew up in an underprivileged community for one reason or another you're sick at maths or you're sick at football or you're like great at art or like you're really good at studying law but because of various factors you're never ever going to reach your full potential if you see me on road say what go on come and stay lovely fam is all blessed man is on deck got a shout out mumsy i can never send a young boy a country but i might put him on the plane take him on tour and tell him get comfy Ten toes in these streets, nah, ten shows in two weeks, and it's kicking off in East. Told young G never back that beef. Why? I don't wanna see man bleed, so I air turning cheeks, and I know it ain't easy, streets be greasy, and that's each, yeah, weeks, yeah, days in the end be bleak. And I feel that wasted talent is is a very, very heartbreaking thing. And yeah, I just wanted to delve into that title. And then I started to think a bit deeper about what does everywhere and nowhere actually mean? And I thought, well, I can relate to that. Me um, and my faith as a Christian, sometimes I feel like God's everywhere and nowhere. Like He says that he sees me and he's all around, but sometimes I still feel lonely. I still feel alone. I'm still like, God, where are you? Um, in the different situations that I've been through, whether it's losing my dad or, or losing friends or not having enough money or worrying and feeling anxious about um, my kids or my marriage or whatever. It's like, God, I know you're here, but I still feel alone. Uh, for like the loved ones that I've lost are everywhere and nowhere. My dad's gone, my, two of my best friends have gone, but they're still here because all the lessons that I learned from them, I'm able to apply them. All the gifts that they've given to me, all the memories that I have, they still keep me going, so they are here. Um, and yeah, I don't know, man. I feel the same for myself as well, I guess, that people can look at Governor B, the artist, um, and see, okay, two mobile awards, three you amazed albums and blah 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 but I'm still gonna compare myself to someone that's a lot further on than me and think oh but I ain't got a tune on Radio 1 so I'm still nowhere and and it's just funny how we can live in those two places like everywhere and nowhere at exactly the same time. <laughs> I think it was just, there's a freedom in this album where um, 
if it felt good, we went there. And that was kind of cool because it's meant that there are tracks on there that feel very unique that to this album and in terms of Gov's uh, previous uh, releases. There's stuff in this album which, um, yeah, I don't think people would have heard. I can say for, for one, there's a trumpet on there on a track, which is a first. Uh, and just, just in, you know, bringing in different musicians, different features. Um, and like I say, if we started an idea and it felt like it should go somewhere, we just did it. We didn't try and box it into a genre. And I think that's shown his diversity across what I think is a consistent sound of an album. There's still something that sounds like us, but it's us just having fun as well with the production, with the beats, with the B BPMs. Um, and all the features that have been on this album have also brought a new flavour as well. Uh, but yeah, I think it's just freedom. It's literally just going, that feels cool, let's do it. I want people to know that even in the worst of situations, there's always blessings to count. There's always a foot that you can put forward. And obviously it's easy for me to say that because I'm not in your situation or that person's situation or that person's situation. But I've been in enough myself to know that even on the worst day of my life, I can look and say, my mum's alive and she's healthy. I'm grateful for that. Like, there's at least one thing I can be grateful for. If we want to go all out, we will be quite tired. We can do, we can understand, and we can put the fence on, and then we can buy a drink last night or something like that. Yeah. And it can be more of a family and friends focus. So, okay. if they broke up, That's Friday morning up, to pre order, and then your um, mind, yeah, all of it, um, but tour through the pre-orders, and then on the Monday, direct people to the tour. So hold a second, everything that was going to be Monday the 24th is now going to be Friday the 21st, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess the Vivian Mare story runs through the DNA of the album, to the album cover and how we illustrated it. It was based on one of her pictures, which is one of my favourite ones of hers. and um, It's of like a bunch of kids that are just playing in their area and they got like these massive smiles on their faces and like they haven't got a problem in the world and it just reminded me of when I've been to uh, disadvantaged areas or, or countries and I've seen some of the happiest people ever even though they're in some of the most uh, distressing situations and I just thought that that picture was amazing because it showed that yeah man like not everything's great around here but we're not gonna sulk about it or we might sulk some days but right now like we're gonna be filled with joy regardless and we're gonna keep pushing countries is looking a little different man how did we get here i was chilling with the prince in the palace same day we hit five million streams on the album